Hello everyone. I want to talk about CLA or conjugated linoleic acid because a lot of people have this understanding today that CLA has a lot of good health benefits but a lot of times I don't think people really understand what CLA is and if it's really that important for us or not. So I'm going to read you some stuff here about CLA and then you can basically make up your mind after this video is over with. So what is CLA? Conjugate linoleic acid or CLA has attracted a lot of attention over the past few years. Many claims for benefits have been made from enhancing weight loss and providing antioxidant protection to treating diabetes and cardiovascular disease but is CLA all it's cracked up to be? Conogenic, conogenic linoleic acid is one or more of eight possible twisted trans fatty acids created from linoleic acid, also known as omega-6 essential fatty acid, EFA. In nature, the conversion of linoleic acid into CLA occurs naturally in the stomach of cows, goats, sheep, and other cud-chewing animals. Accordingly, CLA is found in the meat and milk fat of these species. Butter, for example, normally contains about 5 milligrams of CLA per gram of fat. CLA is also sold in supplement form. To achieve this, omega-6 fatty acids are processed during which the original molecular, molecular structure of the fat is twisted into a different shape. The result is called a trans fat, and as more and more people are becoming aware, trans fats do not have the same desirable effects on health as essential fatty acids. In fact, CLA interferes with the conversion of EFAs, both omega-6s and omega-3s, to derivatives necessary for hormone production. CLA is not essential. Unlike omega-3s and omega-6s, without which we cannot live, we could live healthfully on a CLA-free diet our entire life. The body has no requirement for CLA, but the body has an absolute requirement for EFAs, which should not be interfered with. While CLA is touted for many human problems, there are relatively few human studies to draw on. Unfortunately, a substantial number of these studies indicate that CLA does not do in human studies what it appears to do in animal studies. Some animal studies suggest that CLA can perform antioxidant functions and might have anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, anti-diabetic, and cardioprotective properties. Other studies suggest that CLA actually increases oxidation of cells, which is not so good and carries a warning about the possible worsening of some degenerative conditions. Besides, if one wants antioxidant protection, there are hundreds of substances with antioxidant activity equal to or better than CLA, including vitamin A, beta carotene, and vitamin E. In addition, about half of all edible green plants contain hundreds of different anti-cancer, cardioprotective, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory ingredients. At the CLA doses used in human studies, the research results are quite disappointing. Most human studies find no benefits for the degenerative conditions for which CLA is recommended, weight loss, impaired immune and antioxidant function, and cardiovascular problems. The usual doses of CLA used in animal studies greatly exceed those used in human studies. This may explain why animal studies come up with better results than human studies, and may also explain the negative effects of CLA on liver and insulin in rats, and the changes in yolk quality and hatchability in eggs. So there appears to be a dose-related shadow side to CLA. Remove the shadow by lowering the dose, and the benefits also dis disappear. It seems that CLA is highly overrated in terms of human health benefits. More sizzle than steak, as the saying goes. To effectively treat human diseases for which CLA showed benefits in animals, larger doses that, than are normally available in food, cream or butter, or supplement form would be needed. Based on several calculations, 5% CLA, the highest dose used in animal studies, would convert to 35 and 21 grams of CLA for men and women, respectively. This would be 2.5 tablespoons of CLA for men and 1.5 tablespoons for women. 
These high doses are unaffordable for many at today's prices, making it an it impossible to provide effective doses to those who have problems CLA might address. Even worse, we have to consider the negative effects associated with higher doses of CLA in animals. At these high doses, similar negative effects would likely occur in humans as well. In contrast, the same daily intakes or even higher, up to 10 tablespoons per day, are appropriate for the more important and more affordable omega-3 and omega-6 EFA mixtures. Being far less expensive than CLA, such oils can be taken in the 30 to 150 gram per day range over the long term and confer all of the health benefits hyped for but not delivered by CLA. So what should be our focus? Instead of using CLA, we need to focus on getting enough EFAs. Essential fatty acids cannot be made by the body, but because they are necessary for the normal, healthy functioning of every cell, tissue, gland, and organ, they must therefore be provided by foods. There are two kinds of EFAs, omega-3s and omega-6s. Most people don't get enough omega-3s. People who use flax oil exclusively as a source of EFAs in their diet often don't get enough omega-6s. Those who follow low-fat or no-fat diets are even more at risk of having both EFA deficiencies. It is important to tame both EFAs and in the most beneficial ratio, which we find to be two omega-3s to each omega-6. These EFAs should come from organically grown oils that retain their health-promoting minor ingredients, which include antioxidants, phytosterols, lecithin, and other oil-soluble molecules present in seeds and nuts. Since EFAs are easily destroyed by light, oxygen, and heat, EFA-rich oils should be made and stored under protection from these destructive influences and should not be used during high heat cooking in the home. While they can be used in hot soup or on steamed vegetables, they should not be fried, deep fried, or even sautéed. So hopefully this uh, helps explain more about what CLA is and if it's really needed or not. And uh, obviously, it is not essential to be healthy, um, and the body has no requirement for CLA. So it's much more important to be more focused on getting the EFAs, omega-3 and 6, in your diet, and not being so concerned about getting CLA. And also, keep in mind that um, CLA... Again, it can interfere with the conversion of EFAs, which are necessary for hormone production. So, a lot of times when people tell you, you know, you, you got to eat your CLA, you know, you got to eat the animal food to get your CLA, that's not actually a beneficial thing. Because, again, it will interfere with that conversion of the EFAs. And... If you're looking to use CLA just so that you can get antioxidants, again, um, there's other studies that suggest that CLA can actually increase oxidation of your cells because that could possibly worsen some of your other degenerative conditions that you might be facing. And also, if you really want to get antioxidant protection, it's much better to get it from plant sources because they are very high in antioxidants and they don't come along with all of the pesticides, antibiotics, uh, added hormones, and all the other negative um, consequences that you may find in animal products. So we really don't need CLA, and I think that it's really just another thing that a lot of animal um, eaters like to use as their argument for consuming animal products. And CLA is not a very good argument at all when it comes to saying that we should eat animal products. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, if you like this video, please like, favorite, and subscribe. And I uh, hope everybody out there is having a great day. And uh, catch you in my next video. Bye.